Hello and welcome back to R8 Guns. Today we're going to be taking a look at this brand new Beretta 687 Silver Pigeon 3 Sporter. Okay, so it's no secret I'm a huge Beretta fanboy. Uh, I've owned many and I think they're fantastic guns. But they're not perfect and I think there's always been a bit of a problem with their entry level guns. Um, the 686 Silver Pigeon 1 for example is a fantastic reliable gun, it's just a bit boring. Um, you know, grave on wood and, and, and you know, the engraving's not brilliant. Um, so the question today is, can for an extra £500 this new 687 Silver Pigeon 3 bring the performance gains and the desirability of their upper market guns down to the almost entry level. Quick thank you to Shooting Sports UK for supporting the channel. Without their ongoing support, we wouldn't be able to bring you all these videos, so uh, give them a look. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell notification icon as well. So, let's get on the bench and see what it's about. So this is the Sporter, uh, a game version of this gun has also been available for a little while. Um, in terms of options, there's not a huge amount, but uh, you can get this in 28, 30 and 32 inch barrels. There's also options for an adjustable stock, uh, left handed versions and also a lady scale Victoria as well. It weighs in at 3.55 kilos, which is just about average for a Sporter and it comes in a standard Bretta blue plastic carry case. Starting at the back, we have the very familiar uh, Bretta Micro Core pad system. Uh, it comes with just one, uh, I think this is the 18mm version, but you can get other sizes, uh, thinner or thicker ones, and then spacers as well, so you can tailor it to uh, suit your length of pull. The wood on these is reasonably good. This is a grade two, and you know a vast improvement from their entry level models which are usually very boring and uh, barely a grade one so yeah that's uh, that's quite, quite nice the checkering on these is done by laser and they've really changed the uh, the shape of this um, i'm not sure whether i like it or not i don't really notice it to be honest but looking at it now um, Perhaps not. Make up your own mind. But anyway, it, uh, it it serves a purpose. The whole stock is oil finished and um, it, it's a bit of a semi gloss and it, it looks quite nice and, and a little more premium than uh, perhaps the last generation of uh, 680s. The pistol grip is a little bit further swept back than what I'm used to. I've been, I've been shooting my 690s and my 694. So it's a little bit more swept back, and there's no palm swell on this, so it, just grabbing that takes me, uh, takes me back to, uh, I used to shoot a game version of this uh, quite regular. So. The safety is non-automatic, as you know, you'd, you'd expect from a sporter, um, but it's a nice, simple forward and backwards for save, and it incorporates the barrel selector in there as well. It's all nicely knurled, works very nice, no problem with it. The trigger is gold in colour and non adjustable, but it, it feels very good and uh, it, it resets well. Now let's talk about engraving. Um, on other videos, you may have heard me slating Beretta for their engraving, and I still think that's correct on, on the other guns, but this one I'm really impressed with. Um, it's still laser etched, but they've got a new laser etching machine which apparently works in five axis. And what it's able to do is produce engravings at various depths. 
and this is actually really good. There is a uh, partridge in flight on, on both sides, it's, uh, it's identical, and there's some nice scroll work, some bordering. Um, this carries over underneath as well. Um, you've got some on the forend lever, some on the trigger guard, and on the bottom here, more scroll, the model there, and the Beretta logo. And that is looks very deep. I'm not sure if it is, but it, it, it looks really good anyway. Yeah, I think they've they've listened to uh, the issues people had, being the the wood quality and the engraving, and and you know they've stepped up. Absolutely can't fault them. The action is a standard Bretta 680 action. They've been around a good long while. They're pretty much bomb proof. Parts available in almost every gun shop. You know, it, don't worry, it'll be fine. The gun's chambered for three inch cartridges. It's also steel proofed and superior proofed as well. So if you want to use this as your go-to, you know, your, your combination clay and game gun, yeah, it'll absolutely do both jobs. The barrels themselves are Bretta's Optima HP Steelium barrels, uh, double forcing cones, so expect reasonable patterns. It's really evident how much technology is filtering down from uh, firstly the DT line uh, into the 690s and, and now into the 680s, where you've got the Optima Bore HPs and the better chokes, and you know, it's, it's really good to see. As for the forend, it's, it's rounded. Um, it feels a little wider than the old 680s. Um, I'm not 100% sure, I haven't got one to compare it against, but just from memory that, that, feels, uh, that feels a bit wider, but it could just be me. Both the top and mid ribs are both ventilated. Uh, the top rib is a taper rib from 10mm down to 8 with a white bead sight at the end. It comes with a set of five extended Optima Bore HP chokes. Um, again, like I was saying, these are where I'll go to my uh, 694, uh, albeit they have a coloured band around them, but exactly the same. So uh, you're getting a lot of value with this gun. Right, that's enough talking. Let's go and see how it shoots.
So Bretta have done it. They have paid attention to the marketplace uh, and they've adjusted to suit and they have produced a very uh, beautiful, desirable gun for a reasonable price. My issues with Bretta entry level guns at least were always the wood quality, which in this one they've now stepped up to a grade two and definitely improved the finish. Uh, and the engraving, which on some models was that bad, I would have seen a, a plain action. Whereas on this, with the new five axis engraving, they've just outdone themselves completely. This is fantastic engraving for the money. So, as for shootability, this gun balances very well. Um, as you can see, that's maybe half an inch in front of the hinge pin, which is fantastic and something that could easily be fixed if, uh, if needed. But it, it doesn't feel... Uh, too front heavy anyway. What this gun does though is it's less um, trappy, which seems to be the way that most sporters are going at the moment with their uh, very tight in pistol grips and big palm swells, where this hasn't got and it feels a little bit more classic. Um, this would do absolutely great as a game gun as well, uh, throw some flush fit chokes in the end and you're not going to look out of place at all. Now let's be honest, this maybe once upon a time could have been an entry level gun and a first gun for, for some people, but nowadays with all the Turkish guns on the market at reasonable prices, um, a lot of people aren't willing to invest this much money and, and would sooner buy something more cost effective to dip their toe in the water. So what this is, isn't a great first gun anymore. This is an absolutely fantastic second gun. So thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.